Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning from Abbeyfield. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you all from Lime Kilns. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Dunfermline Abbey on this Remembrance Sunday. It's good to have you here with us, whether you are a member of the congregation, someone who has been with us in this period of being apart, or if you've just joined us for Remembrance Sunday today. There are a few intimations, and a lot of them seem to involve knitting or crocheting or craft. Um, first of all, um, because it's the season of remembrance, I have um, taken away the ribbons from outside the vestry and there is now a display of knitted and crocheted poppies. You are welcome to come and add a knitted or crocheted poppy to that display and if you haven't got time to knit one or crochet them there is a small supply in a bag that's hidden behind the bins at the hall and you're welcome to go and have a wee look and see if you can find one there. We're coming close to the time when I, when we as a congregation will be distributing the Knitted Angels that many people have been working on. And I'm wondering if people could help them to wing their way to me. Um, it would be good if those who are knitting, knitting or crocheting angels could be in touch with me during this week um, so that I can work out how they might be collected and then count them and arrange for labels to be put on them so that we can then distribute them to the places that we're hoping they would go. I'm also hoping that um, people might have started to make chrisman decorations. And these are decorations that can be knitted or crocheted, paper craft, um, sewing or cross stitch. Um, if you receive your newsletter by email, you would have seen in the email that comes with the newsletter, this was mentioned in that. Those of you who receive your newsletter by post won't know about the chrisman decorations. We're planning, because everything is different this year, to do something different with the Christmas tree. And so through Advent, in the later part of Advent, when the Christmas tree appears, um, it will slowly be decorated with Christmas decorations, hopefully made by some or all of you, um, so, so that you can perhaps have something here in the Abbey for that period of waiting for Christmas. Um, it, there will be more in the next newsletter, but I'm hoping that some of you may have already started to move on to that task. There are two opportunities for in-person worship this week or communal worship this week. On Wednesday, on Remembrance Day itself, there is a service at 10.50 a.m. And if you would like to be at that service, then can I ask you to book by emailing the church office or by having a wee look at your newsletter and contacting Liz Wilson, whose details are in the newsletter. And then... On Sunday, next Sunday at half past nine, there is another opportunity for you to be here for worship. And again, um, booking doesn't open until Wednesday afternoon. We want to do the one set of booking before we start the next. So booking doesn't open until Wednesday afternoon. And again, either email the office or look at your newsletter and see where you should be phoning. We meet at a distance on a day full of memory for some and discovery for others. We meet longing for the presence of God and knowing that God is with us, filling our frames and surrounding our lives. We meet recognising our own failure to live as a people of peace when we rumble with selfish discontent and unwillingness to see the other perspective. On this day of remembrance, our focus shifts from the smallness of our space to remember vast battlefields and battalions of men and women, mud and mire, desert and waste ground. Distance from one another sharpens the memory of longing and waiting and hoping for love rekindled and communities restored. So in our waiting, let us worship God. We sing the hymn number 702, Lord in love and perfect wisdom.
Let's draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of justice, spilling your grace into the life of the world, you are unbounded in the people and places that you draw into your embrace. In a world of division and antagonism, your eternal presence is a balm that smooths and salves the wounds created by weapon and word. You are the inspiration to reach beyond the comfortable and notice need and responsibility. On a day of remembering battle and loss of life, comradeship and community purpose, you draw us into the living presence of Christ with us. Invite us to be those who offer friendship and kindness in a world that still struggles to live in peace. Presence of God, confront us with our petulance as we ignore the teaching of your life and choose the path of self. Ignore our righteous declaration of priority and challenge us to hear the solemn lament of another caught in a world that seems to offer no hope of reprieve. In the silence of this day, we come in need of forgiveness and knowing that love is bestowed before the thought has seeded in our imaginations. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Comforter of life, you are the embrace of our failings and the opportunity to walk a new path. In the days that lie ahead, may you awaken us to the world in which we live and make us mindful of Christ's purpose for our lives and mindful of Christ with us, we share together the words that he taught, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I said to Matthew at the beginning I wasn't going to do this again, but I am going to do it again. It just won't work in the same way. I'll hold it away further from my cassock this time as well. <laughs> oh, I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's here. Now, in this jar... In this jar, just so you can see, in this jar, there was oil and water. And you can still see, I think, if I were to put it here, you can still see the contrasting layers. That this, Here there's a bit of water. This is now fat, and at the top there's bubbles. If you know about oil and water, you know that oil and water don't mix. But no matter how much you shake them, they just immediately separate. And in fact, that's what they've done. I've maybe not put enough in there. It might still happen. It can be a bit like that in our world. When we think that we are absolutely right, we can stand in opposition to another person. And when our um, views differ so much, we find it very, very difficult to mix, to come together, to find a common point of view. Jesus invites us and asks us in his story, in his life, to be the peacemakers, to be those who don't live in conflict to one another. He asks us to be the bind that brings people together, to find the paths through the conflicts, to find the common areas, the shared things that we agree on, and to work together. What I put in this jar earlier during the service was um, some fairy liquid. I've got it in my bag here. And when you add washing up liquid to oil and water, you find that they mix much more easily together. The barriers are broken down. So we are invited 
to be those who mix through the divisions of our world, to break down the barriers in Christ's love and to share Christ's love with the world. We're going to sing, and we're going to sing hymn number 501. Take this moment, sign and space. Our first reading comes from the book of um, the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, reading verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord of himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Today's reading is from Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, 
Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the valleys down below, where the fairest flowers blow and the brooks run babbling nonsense to the sea, underneath the shady trees we too sauntered at our ease, just a pleasant little world for you and me. Then the summons of the Lord, like a sudden silver sword, came and cut our little pleasant world in two. One fierce world of strife and hate, one sad world where women wait, and we wander far apart, dear I and you. And it may be with this breath there will come the call of death, and will put another world twixt you and me. You will stand with God above, I will stand twixt pride and love, looking out through mists of sorrow o'er the sea. Yet the world in God is one, and when all our strife is done, there will dawn the perfect world for you and me. When we two stand together, looking upwards hand in hand, where the fires of love have burned up every sea. The poem comes from J. Studdart Kennedy's book, The Unutterable Beauty. Better known as the Padre Woodbine Willie, his poems captured the experiences of suffering and death with tenderness and compassion. They brought comfort to those who were serving and those who waited at home. And many of the poems still speak to the world in which we live today. Two Worlds poetically captures the thoughts within both readings this morning. It speaks of waiting while the world keeps turning and captures thoughts of the entwining of heaven and earth. The words resonate in our world too. We live in a world of strife and hate. We live with waiting. We live uncertain of when heaven might break into the world and yet knowing that God is with us. Waiting. It's an everyday experience for us, and yet waiting comes in many varieties. We wait for short-term things, for our turn in the queue, appointments. Once upon a time, we waited for public transport. In the United Kingdom, we are polite and orderly in our waiting, checking out who would be in front of us, and always sure of those who come after us. But waiting can also be a long-term thing. On Remembrance Sunday, our thoughts perhaps turn to families who've waited for loved ones to return. Some would know the elation of family reunited while others still wait. In a year when we've marked both VE Day and VJ Day, there have been opportunities to listen to the voices of World War II veterans. At this time last year, we were introduced to the D-Day veteran Harry Billinge, whose waiting has been marked by raising funds to build a monument in memory of the young men he had served with. In the midst of a pandemic of waiting, another veteran, Tom Moore, used his waiting time to walk and raise money for the NHS. This pandemic for us all has been a waiting time. Waiting to see family and friends properly, to be able to hug and bridge the gap in our humanity. Waiting to see the economic impact on jobs and livelihoods. Waiting for a vaccine so that life can return to normal. Waiting for the result of a USA election. And now we wait to see how, one, how the changing leadership will affect the wider world. How are we using these waiting days? Are they days of abandoned hope or days of questioning our normal and thinking of a fairer, caring, environmentally sustainable future? The people of Thessalonica were waiting. 
They were waiting for Paul to come back and visit them, but they were also waiting for the return of Jesus. Paul's letter to them responds to a pastoral concern that they've raised because of their waiting. Like other early Christian communities, they'd expected an imminent return of Jesus. Like government officials, today they were measuring time in generations. As time moved on, some of the community had died, and in their grief, those left behind were concerned that those they loved would now not be included in Christ's triumph. Using apocalyptic sound and vision, Paul offers the assurance that these loved people are still within the community of Christ. Because in Christ's resurrection from the dead, heaven and earth have already been entwined. The community for whom Matthew's gospel was written were waiting. Like the Thessalonians, it's likely they, they were concerned by the delay in Jesus' return to claim his own. And the Gospel of Matthew's put together as a gospel, particularly for the community that followed Matthew. And so this story of the Bridesmaids only appears in that gospel. It's not the kind of story that we are sure about. We're uncertain because we're not sure if we're awaiting community, waiting for the arrival of God's kingdom. The apocalyptic language that we encounter in the Gospels, in Thessalonians, in the book of Revelation, and many other places within Scripture, uses a cosmology that's outdated to our understanding of the world, and we feel uncomfortable with the thought of judgment. And yet, the time of an ushering in of a new way of life is promised time and time again. And to ignore the promise and potential of those words suggests that we're not willing to hear or explore all of Jesus' teaching. What does this passage tell us about waiting? And maybe even about judgment? I think what it says about waiting is not so much about being wise or foolish, but being prepared to hang on in there, even when we think there's no hope or our resources are depleted. It strikes me that the difference in the way the foolish bridesmaids are treated is not because they don't have enough oil, but that they stop waiting. They walk away. In these days of waiting, of longing to be back together, we need to hear that. This is not a time to walk away from waiting for the possibility of a celebration of the presence of Christ. But even when our energies and resources are struggling, we are to hold on for the celebration that God brings. In our piece on the Gospel of Matthew, the pastor Debbie Thomas writes, Scarcity isn't a thing in God's kingdom. Quit hoarding. Ironically enough, the wise bridesmaids in Jesus' parable distrust the sufficiency, generosity, and the love of the bridegroom as much as the foolish bridesmaids do. Operating on the basis of scarcity and fear, they refuse to share their oil. Smug in their own preparedness and wisdom, they forget all about mercy empathy, kinship, and hospitality. They forget that the point of a wedding celebration is celebration, gathering, communing, joining, sharing. It doesn't occur to them that their stinginess has consequences, that it sends their five companions stumbling into the midnight darkness, that it diminishes the wedding, depriving the bridal company couple and their remaining guests of five lively, caring companions. At times, at the moment, living is exhausting of our energies. Without the natural opportunities for restoring our humanity, our faith, we may feel like the, lamp, the oil in our lamps is ebbing away. But as I suggested earlier, Maybe these days of waiting 
could be used to explore the heaven on earth God seeks to create with us. Rather than hankering for the return to a normal that best suited us, but ignored those who were disadvantaged by their postcode, community, age, gender and colour. We should be exploring what a community that responds with compassion for the vulnerable and sustainable care for the environment looks like. We are the bridesmaids waiting and we have an opportunity to look at the lamps of those around us and refresh the oil of those in need. We are waiting, not waiting for a pandemic to end. <coughs> not waiting for a pandemic to end, but for the celebration that happens when we recognise our dependence on God and upon one another in creating a world where all our flames burn brightly. Amen. Let's draw near to God in prayer and let us pray. 
Creator of our world who formed us in your image, you inspire us to look into the eyes of another and find you there, and in doing so to recognise the ideals and hopes we share. Lead us towards peace in our relationships and in the way we respond to fraught difficulties found in workplaces, streets and leisure activities that are part of our days. In the memories of this day, our memories of women and men who took on roles of responsibility and leadership as they placed their feet on foreign shores, in aircraft hangars, on battleships and in campaign rooms. We pray for those who show leadership in our time, that they may have wisdom and courage to stand for justice and what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're conscious of the divisions of our world, perhaps all the more noticeable in the battle of politics we have watched happening in the USA. We cannot ignore the bias of rich over poor, of white over black, or the distinction of gender or age. Bless those who are at work in our communities, seeking to relieve poverty, to break down prejudice, to protect those who are persecuted. We pray for the people of the USA as they begin the transition of power in a new presidency. Make us mindful of those who are hurt by the choices and hopeful of the potential of change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and lover of understanding, in the lives of others we have encountered faith in a living God that has inspired them to seek after the freedom and safety of all people. May we respond with our own passionate faith so that others may meet Christ's presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. After the blessing, we are going to pause for a wee moment. We'll hope that you'll either stay with us or if you're just joining us, you'll um, come be here for the act of remembrance. That will begin just after 10 to, 11, 10 to 11. We sing our final hymn, the hymn number 707, Healing River of the Spirit. God's handiwork is not an ancient struggle. 
God's handiwork is a promise revealed in the life of the faithful. May we live as a promise that speaks of God in our world. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>